guys, this is Brian Croft. Thanks for uh, subscribing to our channel. Make sure you hit the like and the bell. Um, and just fasten your seatbelt, so I'm going to teach you all I can about the vending business. Shout out to my baby girl Shelby and my son Bryson. Hello world, um, my name is Brian Croft. I'm uh, a third generation vendor. Uh, vending's been in my family since probably before the 60s. Uh, my uncle started his first vending route at a factory. He was the maintenance guy back in the 50s, 60s at a shirt factory that uh, they asked him to, to do the vending machine. So I've seen vending ever since I was a little boy and uh, had no intentions of getting into vending business at all. And I had my own path. I'm, a, I'm a, currently a 25 year uh, volunteer fireman. I'm the assistant fire chief on a, on a county department. And uh, I pursued a job with the state to be a wildland firefighter. And I was also in the uh, Air National Guard as a as a uh, security force member and taught people how to shoot under the Combat Arms uh, Division. So I've I've done a lot of things and ch chose my own path. But uh, God has a funny way of working things out. And um, several years later, uh, I met my wife, Mandy. We were dating at the time, and her uncle owns a big onion farm. And uh, just for some side money while we were dating, we decided to uh, pick up the vending machines at the farm. I think it was two snack machines and eight drink machines. We both worked full-time jobs, went to Sam's back and forth in the afternoons and uh, filled vending machines at night, sometimes till 12 o'clock at night during onion season. Uh, Vidalia Sweet Onions, uh, Bland Farms. I'll give a shout out to Bland Farms. And uh, how we grew from two borrowed machines from my dad at an onion farm to 400 machines and five micro markets. Uh, from 2001 till uh, March of this year. And uh, so hang on, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. I'm not a professional video maker, but I do wanna share secrets and inside tips of how I got big accounts from uh, these big franchise owners and, uh, and grew my company one piece at a time. You can bite off just a little bit at a time with a lot of motivation and you can grow. So it's kind of how we started. Uh, there's a little more to the story and I want to tell you guys, um, when I, I was working for the state, I was a wildland firefighter and we had a big fire uh, that burned uh, across two states actually. And uh, all the way from the Okefenokee Swamp down to uh, Florida, that was 2006. And I detached a retina in my left eye and had to have a couple of surgeries and my left eye is completely blurry. So the vision requirements to be a firefighter uh, were pretty high and um, they put me in a training division and I loved it. You know, I was pursuing that hard. I, I worked for two and a half years to get all the certifications to be a training officer because I love training in the Air Force. And, and uh, my position come up for budget reduction um, because I couldn't basically go back to firefighting. So, God, uh, you know, always have a way of working things out. 2008-ish, uh, that's about uh, the year that uh, things started falling into place with uh, pushing me out the window and making me go full-time in the vending business. And um, so this, this uh, other operator, he passed away and his family wanted to sell his route. And at the time we had about... 20 machines we were kind of tinkering with after we got off work. And um, the this route had about 45 machines or so. And we met with a lady and um, what was neat about it was when we met, the, the man that was helping her fill the machines was a was an ex-pastor of mine from a church I attended when I was a kid. Four to six months on my own. And I had one nursing home and over in Vidalia. And uh, that, that nursing home... Uh, a guy came by and he saw my card on the machines and he wanted to sell his route. He had a coffee, water, and vending business. So he saw it wanted to sell his vending route. So I looked into it and I was like, there's no way I can afford to buy another route after just buying this route. And um, so, you know, my eye injury at this time was like literally four, months, four years old. And uh, I called the state and... 
uh, we were kind of curious about, you know, what they were going to do about my eye or my workman's comp claim on my eye or whatever, ever how that works. And, and, uh, we looked at, looked into it, uh, the next day and it's, it's just amazing God's timing. I'm just telling you guys, God, you cannot outgive God and, and in his timing, uh, the lady wouldn't talk to my wife on the phone, but she put me on three way and she said, uh, she said, Mr. Croft, she said, we processed your claim yesterday and uh, you'll be receiving X amount of money and that that it was it was enough to make me literally break down and, and uh, call the guy that owned the business and say, hey, hey, uh, do you believe in God? And he said, yeah, what's going on? That's the only thing I can tell you is the good Lord wants me to be in the vending business. So that next day, we uh, went from about 45 machines to 85 machines. And uh, I hired my first route driver. And uh, we had two box trucks. And we started kind of just, I run a route and he run a route. I did all the ordering in, in inventory and all that. We, we worked out of a 12 by 12 utility building and with drinks, snacks and all. And uh, we hustled and hustled and hustled. And uh, we kept telling our story, and and uh, we just grew from there. But what what I wanted to get into with you guys, and I'm gonna do these small. I'm gonna try to break the videos down. So, like starting out, what to do, uh, how to get accounts. But the very first thing I, I think you should do uh, as a new operator is uh, first thing you need to do is evaluate your core values and evaluate yourself. You need to know what motivates you um, and basically do a really good self-evaluation. Are you the type of person who can basically just talk to anybody? If, if you're a person who can talk to anybody and, and, and get along with most people, uh, you'll probably be pretty good for the vending business. Um, if you're clammed up and don't want to approach people who do not want to communicate with people, um, you, you just probably is not a, a, a good fit for you. The You have to build a relate. This is more of a relationships business than it is a snacks and cookie business. It's uh, You have to build those rapport. You have to build that relationship or you won't be in that account long. You've got to be going in and checking with human resources and those folks to who basically pull the trigger on who ha can and cannot come in and do the vending business. Every location has that person. Some, pl some places it's the finance pr pr personnel. Most of the time it's the human resource director or the human resource person. They want uh, dependable machines, field, service, working, and clean for their employees to enjoy while they're at work. Uh, so number one, I just like to that's the very first thing I think you should do is really evaluate yourself. And are you motivated? This is not a get rich quick business. It is not uh, an easy thing to do. It is a hustle. Those of you who are already doing it know how much of a hustle it is. It's a hustle to go get the product, load the product, haul the product back, store the product. I mean, even if you're just like me and me and my wife, Mandy, we were we were working out of our kitchen. Uh, we started uh, going back and forth to Sam's and, and our whole kitchen was full of Sam's boxes. And then as you grow, you, you create another problem. Then you need a filing system. Where am I going to file all the re records and reports and, and the commission statements that I'm keeping up with for all the locations I have? Even with 10 locations, if you're doing commissions on a monthly basis, or hopefully you try to talk them into a quarterly basis, and uh, I'll, I'll talk to more about that later too, but uh, about commissions and what to offer and how to offer it and what pricing to set. Uh, there is so many things about the vending business that, uh, that I can teach you and tell you about. And I, I just want to share um, with the world um, where we are. And I, I, I don't know if you heard in my um, introduction, but uh, that I wrote out to some people, and so I need to put it on the video. Uh, 2000... February 1st of 2018, we read a fire, and um, I've always carried a concealed carry forever and ever, and um, 
I had took my pocket carry out of my pocket and laid it in my fire bag when we put our fire gear on. And we were at a house way down in the woods in the country. Um, and I didn't feel like something was right. Um, we eventually determined that there was probably some drugs in the house and a possible meth lab. So I, with my law enforcement background, um, told all the firemen to go home except three people. And I went and got my pocket carry and put it in my right pocket and told my brother to block the driveway with his truck. And the other three of us stayed at the house until the law enforcement could get there. And in the meantime, um, we were all out there standing around talking about an hour later. And I reached in my pocket to grab my phone and pulled the trigger on that nine millimeter pistol. It was in the holster supposedly, but it had backed out of the holster about an inch, just enough for me to get my finger in, um, in the right spot when I went to grab my phone. The bullet went in the top of my thigh, down behind my kneecap and took out about 18 inches of my artery. Of course, I didn't know it at the time because I had no exit wound. Uh, they flew me to Savannah. The Savannah doctors were gonna amputate my leg at the above or below the kneecap, but um, I begged them not to, and they robbed a vein out of your, my left leg that they say when you get older, they fix your heart with. So they took a vein out of here and made a new artery from the back of my kneecap down to my ankle and my right leg. And currently I can walk, sort of run, my right ankle don't bend real well, so now I'm working with a limp and, I, and my foot don't roll left or right. So pushing and pulling dollies like I used to is not the same. Matter of fact, I can push them pretty good, but I can barely pull them. So I had 400 machines and five micro markets and decided to scale down to about half the size I was because of my injury. Sold half my company. Uh, with a territorial agreement that they would not come into the two counties that I lived in around and I had an agreement with this company for five years no no compete clause a one or two man shop and and be successful for, um, and what you think is successful is is not always doing a million dollars a year uh, it could be just being happy and being with your family and making a living like I, that's basically where I've come to now is uh, I want to be I want to make just enough money to make a living and and be happy with being with my family. You see, you, you got to make a lot of money to vending business to pay somebody else to do your repairs. Same thing with moving your equipment. I know I've seen a lot of these you, new new vending movers. They rent somebody to move their machines, and that's fine. If that's what you have to do, that's perfectly fine. But I think you should build. Um, first thing you should have is a way to move your machines. Um, I'm gonna show you my trailer. It's an, it's an amazing trailer and, and then uh, it has no axles and it lifts up and down to the ground and I can I can actually go get a Coke machine right by myself. I'll, there's also a small pallet jack I wanna tell you about. It's, uh, it's skinny and short. So when you go to get a drink machine, you to remove a drink machine in and out of a door, even a snack machine in a narrow door, you don't have to twist it on their floor or scratch the floor up. There's a small pallet jack out there that is narrow and short. You can get a machine from the side and not the front, open the door of the machine and spin the machine into the room, never touching the floor or the wall or the doors. I personally placed all 400 of the machines I had put out. Didn't hire anybody. I'm basically just gonna walk you through step by step how, what, how I went from two machines to 400, step by step by step and I just wanted to try to introduce myself to the world, but I want to show you guys uh, step by step uh, how to increase your vending business uh, the way I did. I'm, I'm going to show you what I did. And I say it's going to work perfect for you, but there's no way it can't. But uh, nice to meet everyone and looking forward to the next video. I hated this one was so long, but I wanted to kind of just introduce myself to you guys and. Um, I'll see you on the next video.